Good day, and thank you for joining us. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. As we approach midlife, many of us find ourselves in search of a particular spirituality that will help fulfill us. Sometimes we find ourselves a little empty-handed thinking that the path that we have followed for many, many years was the right one because it was what we were told to do. It was what was expected of us. But then at the end of that particular road, we find ourselves empty-handed and wondering, why don't I feel fulfilled? Joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program today is a wonderful guest who might be able to help lead you on a path that you hadn't considered before. She spent more than 35 years unfolding herself through meditation. She was a former founder and CEO from a biotech industry who left the corporate world and decided to found the path to an end. She is popularly known for Blissful Living, is a spiritual guide, self-transformational and happiness coach, international speaker, and bestseller of more than 11 books. She's joining us here today to talk about the Bhagavad Gita and 108 messages, or mantras, if you will, that have been distilled from more than 700 verses from the Bhagavad Gita. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program our special guest, Satya Kaura. Satya, how are you today? I am fine. Thank you very much for having me as a guest on your show, your wonderful show. I enjoyed it before, and... Again, namaste and good morning to your audience and my audience because now they are my audience as well. Thank and, you very much. And that's what blissful living is all about, is being grateful, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I think today, you know, too many of us take things for granted. We get up every day, we find ourselves in a routine where we go to a job and find all those things about that job we don't like. Then we go home at the end of the day and feel a sense of dissatisfaction with all the things we have. And we take a lot of the little things, turn them into big things. And I sometimes wonder if that's the source of our suffering is just a perspective that we have about that lack of gratitude as we were just talking about. What are your thoughts on that? You know, you just summarized the whole Bhagavad Gita and all the other <laughs> mantras for me. I just shot right through all <laughs> 700 of them, huh? <laughs> because you started with the problem and you came up with a solution also. Because at the very last mantra of 108 mantras or Bhagavad Gita is expressing your gratitude to yourself others, and Almighty. So, the problem, all the problems are, as you mentioned, and uh, things, we, things happen in our life which we like or we don't like. And most of the things we don't like. And when we don't like them, they do not sit very well with our physical body, our emotional mind, and that disconnects us from who we are. And that's what the uh, Bhagavad Gita is all about. There are two characters, main characters in Bhagavad Gita. One is Arjuna, the friend, and Lord Krishna, who is also a friend, but Arjuna did not know that he was his friend. And uh, Arjuna felt very depressed due to the family feuds, and he had to take certain steps where he basically he had to go against them and fight against them because they were treated badly and all that. So they had to bring back the righteousness, dharma in the society. But at the last minute, he freaked out because he felt he was fighting with his family members, kins, and respected grandparents and gurus and teachers and all that who were happened to be on the bad side of uh, or the cousin, say, on his cousin who was a kind of a uh, black sheep or the, I would say, I call it as a culprit of the family or the society. And he had to do, go against him to fight. And at the last minute he says, no, I do not want to fight because it might 
create some bloodshed. I might cause the pain to other people. And, of course, I will going to acquire the sin. So I don't want to do this. And that's where his dear friend, divine friend, which happens to be Lord Krishna, guides him and tells him. And basically, whole Bhagavad Gita starts and the whole Bhagavad Gita was given more than 5,000 years ago in the battlefield, not in the ashrams, not on the Himalayas, not on, in the nature, beautiful places, calm places, in the most disturbed place. And that's why I call it that the battlefield is not just where two people fight or the two Mm, uh, armies fight battlefield now it is within us we all the time are struggling with what is good what is bad what is right what is not what should I do what should I not do all the confusions that is the battlefield of life mm -hmm. and we have to learn how to solve our issues become more problem solutions but before that we do anything, we have to be aware of the problem and accept it. Many times we do not even accept the problem. That's what Arjuna did not want to accept the problem. He was telling his divine friend, whatever you are telling me, it does not sit in with my system and I'm not going to do as you tell me. Mm -hmm. And then, but, when after speaking all that, then he says, now give me the advice. And his divine friend smiles. He says, are you ready to listen? And then he says, yes. He folds his hands, he sits, and he, he just starts listening to him. And finally, at the end of these 108 mantras or Bhagavad Gita, he said, now my attachment has been dissolved I am detached from my selfishness, my ego, because I thought I was the one who was doing all these things and everybody belongs to me and I am better than them and I'm not going to cause this and I'm not going to do this. But he says, you had opened my eyes now. Hmm. And now I'm going to do as you advise. But this all happens because of you. Thank you very much. So that's how the whole Bhagavad Gita started. And it takes a step by a step from confusions, from our lower self to higher self. That's why I named these 108 mantras to awaken your soul. Because Arjuna went into deep depression when he saw all the near and dear ones in the battlefield and freaked out that he's going to, they might get killed by him. Mm -hmm. So he went into deep depression. And he, his divine friend uplifted him. And that's why it's called 108 mantras to awaken your soul. So when, whenever I was in confusion, I was reading Bhagavad Gita. As Mahatma Gandhi also said, that any time he had a confusion, he would open a, any page of Bhagavad Gita and he would get the answer. And look what he did. Based on the teachings of Bhagavad Gita, he could focus to free the country. Although there were many other people who were helping him, but his motto was that I'm going to free the country and he helped with his principles, with the base of Gita's teachings, and he became next to God in India. I mean, look at the Gandhi name. It starts with G. Mm -hmm. God it starts with G as well. People worship him. And not only that, look at Martin Luther King. The other people who fought for freedom of the countries, they always use him as an example his principles, his teachings. Mm -hmm. And his teachings were coming from Bhagavad Gita. So what Bhagavad Gita does, 
it makes us to recognize and accept our situations, who we are, because Arjuna forgot that he was born as a warrior and his dharma, his prescribed duty or responsibility was to save the society from injustice or nonsense, whatever you want to call it. And he did not want to do it. He wanted to run away. And mm-hmm. he says, I will go to Himalayas and leave everything here for my crooked cousins and uh, let them do whatever they want. And the divine friend says, no, your job is to protect the society, not just yourself, protect the whole society. And you want to run away? Run away is not a part of your prescribed duty because you are a warrior. Mm-hmm. Following a spiritual path also as you ascend, if you will, it seems that it gets more difficult, uh, that you really have to build strength to persevere as you ascend at the different levels. And, you know, when you take, uh, for instance, a look at people such as Jesus Christ, Muhammad, Gandhi, uh, Buddha, you know, these people, they sort of light up a particular light that attracts the suffering of the world to them. And they all kind of want to take from that in such a way that it's almost as though, well, I want to have what you have, but I really don't want to do the work that's necessary to get there. They want to take shortcuts. What is it within us that causes us, do you think, you know, to want that to do that? Is, that is the disconnection. And they do not, when we understand the purpose of my life here is that God has sent me to do something here. Right. Once we, know, once we turn ourselves and focus and align more toward the divinity or internal being, then we start seeing that light. And then once we are connected, like when the tree is, roots are grounded, then storms will come. The small plants and trees will get uprooted. But the strongest, the tree which has the strongest root and connected to the earth will not get uprooted. It still will shine. It will come out of it. And that's what Gandhi and Martin Luther King and Jesus, they did not feel that they were suffering. They were for so much focus on the well-being and establishing the righteousness and establishing the setting a, an example and bringing the light to the ignorance people who are causing these damages and creating the suffering that there is a better way. And at the end, these strong people last, which says the tough times don't last, but tough people last. So these are those tough people, and if we become those tough people, I mean, think about it. Everybody in life goes through miseries, difficult times, and the people who have the attitude to come out, they are the ones shine and move, go to next level. So these blockages, do not, these are the stepping stones for us, rather than think these are the blockages and I don't want to cross that. Once we take that attitude that everything comes in my life, it is teaching me the lesson and taking me to the next level. Like when mm-hmm. we are in the school, what happens? We study, then tough time comes and we have the quizzes and we are all studying so hard. Mm-hmm. And then if you pass, we are allowed to go to the next grade, next class. But if we flunk and don't study, what happens? We stay there for years and years and years. <laughs> okay. So this whole mm-hmm. life is a learning lesson. A whole is a whole is a school. So we have to just focus on learning and the purpose, and move on happily rather than complaining and uh, crying about it. That's what Lord Krishna or Divine Company of Arjuna said. Don't keep crying like a baby here. You are a warrior. Warriors don't cry. They just <laughs> go. You know, so don't keep crying. Mm-hmm. And one of my guru always says, he says, 
every time you face the challenges never say why me say try me and the divine will help you to go through those tough times so rather than sitting back and not doing something about it do something about it mm-hmm. move on with life because if we don't what happens we go into depression we think negative we feel guilty of not taking the steps we feel lost and dejected and those are the causes of all the miseries and many times when people go into deep depression suicidal thoughts come and people suicide and if they do not suicide themselves they go and start killing others they develop so much hatred so much guilt in themselves mm-hmm. and not only that their mind is filled with all those impurities hatred jealousy killing anger taking advantage of other people they just think on the negative path and they just keep going on it and what happens they develop so much toxins in their body because they can't even breathe properly they cannot take a oxygen they have a short breath they breathe only from their diaphragm and not all the way to the below the belly button and all the mm, lower level of the stomach so they don't get enough oxygen and what happens carbon dioxide is getting more and more in the system more toxins are developing those toxins are eating up our immune system our genes are becoming more mutants and developing more autoimmune diseases cancer asthma back pains heart attacks you name it all these are causes of this unsatisfaction in life and mm-hmm. when we are unsatisfied what happens we want to run 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 like a running like a chicken without a head <laughs> and develop the eight personalities because we want to achieve everything and we can't achieve because we are not satisfied because we develop so much unsatisfaction and end of the day what happens we end up with heart attacks and cancers and back aches and if nothing else emotional problems and that we are so possessed with our <laughs> ego and selfishness and we lose our relationships with people mhm because then i do not i do not relate with other people but when i am disconnected with myself with myself how could i connect with others i would don't know i forget who i am i am that beautiful human being who god sent on this earth look at how beautiful and happy kids are when they are born and little by little with their circumstances and surroundings and all that but they turn out to be they were not born as a terrorist mhm they were not born as a criminals they were not born as a depressed people look at the baby when he's born how much when they start crawling and laughing and enjoying and jumping up and down and you go and play in the sand boxes and all that where does it come from all that happiness and little by little we develop that miseries and unhappiness by being detached from ourselves mm-hmm. the older we get the more detached we get unless we have a divine company or divine or we connect ourselves to higher self or spirituality or goodness thinking goodness or thinking positive not too much positive because sometimes that they mislead also or at least think neutral and see the goodness in this world in ourselves and once we start seeing that light bulb goes ah our mm-hmm. ego is start dissolving <clears throat> and we start seeing goodness in other people and i say this is not so bad and we start relating with other people but we have to pay attention we we have to be aware of it how we eat what we say where we go what kind of company we mingle what kind of action we do we have to live in awareness not in ignorance and do whatever comes in a, in front of us we have to plan self discipline and plan our day and our life to reach to higher self 
And that's what Bhagavad Gita has 107 verses. I mean, I'm sorry, it had 700 verses. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it becomes very difficult to read all those verses. So when I chosen that path that I wanted to do the self-improvement, I start marking those verses which were helping me to self-improve. Then I took those, putting together, and I got those 108 verses, which transformed me. Because initially, I made a list of the things that, what are the things bother me? What are the things kind of I want to change about myself, and I don't like about myself, and I might be hurting other people, and creating unhappiness in myself and sometimes in, insomnia and I couldn't sleep at night and make me <clears> sick, <throat> I had a back problem and all that. Where is this coming from? Once I learned that it was all, I was the one who was causing with my insecurities, insatisfact, unsatisfaction, and I made the list of those things. And then I started working on that one by one through these 108 mantras. So I created those beautiful 108 mantras cards. And not only those cards have, you know, some these are the uh, Bhagavad Gita's verses, but sometimes it's not easy to tra- read. So then I made them very simple. For example, the whole verse will say that how to be happy. But at the same time, I will have it one thing on the top, and it will say happiness. So I summarized and I made it so simple for people. And let me tell you, like this one word, happy person, beyond selfish desire. This is a mantra, happy person, means I am happy. But the word says, one who is fully joyful, happy, cheerful, never grieves, nor has any selfish or materialistic or takes advantage of other people, that person is in peace and happy and achieves eternal happiness, peace, and connects himself with the Supreme, which is we can call it God or whatever we want to call it. But the simple format of that mantra is be happy. Mm-hmm. I am happy. So my mantra for today is, is I am happy. So if something happens, I am happy. So Bhagavad Gita or these mantras are not just a religious uh, mantras. These are for everyday practical mantras. And one can read them. I use them. This I was the way when I have some issue to solve. I take one mantra in the morning. I just keep reciting it whole day. I would have it in my pocket. And then I will practice it. For example, if the mantra says smile, I will make sure in the morning when I'm brushing my teeth, I'm smiling and practicing it. And then whole day when I talk to people, when I am saying hello to people, I am smiling. And with every breath, I take breath in and out, like inhalation and exhalation. So that day, I will be inhaling a smile and exhaling a smile, so then I can cultivate and manifest a smile within me and give it to others as well. And that's what these mantras do. That's what the teaching of Bhagavad Gita is. Live in peace. Live in anandam. Blissful state. And then give it to others. So then others become happier. And not only just others, the family members, the society, the whole universe becomes happier. So if whatever we do, if we send the negative vibrations around us, the environment becomes infected with the negativity. At the same time, when we are happy, believe and feel blissful and smile, our environment starts smiling. Look at even the plants feel your smile. And send that smile and happiness to the every <clears throat> atom, 
every electron, every proton in the universe and make this universe a better place to live. Mm-hmm. That is a teaching of this 108 mantras and teaching of Bhagavad Gita. Satya, if you could, for our listeners, describe from the perspective of the Bhagavad Gita what karma actually is. Because you hear this word thrown around so much that I sometimes feel that people become confused or they dilute it down to what it is. And it's almost as though when they use the word karma, it's either you're being rewarded for something that you're either doing or have done or could have done in a past lifetime, or you're being punished for the very same reason, you know, for something you've just done, something you might have done a while ago or in a past lifetime. And there was uh, someone that I was talking with that seems to be under the idea, now it could be true, I don't know, Uh, for instance, you're put into this lifetime, and that maybe you have all these circumstances that to uh, an outside viewer would seem like, why did you come into this life to suffer with all this adversity that you seem to have? Why doesn't your life seem to work out? And the easiest answer is to simply say, well, you're working off all this bad karma from past lifetimes. Now, understanding the perspective of the Hindu, or Hinduism, if you will, their divine teachings are completely about love. I don't see how they would ever, or and, and even in the Bible, how, well, in the Bible there seems to be a punishing God from time to time, but generally speaking, God is a loving God, and I say, why would God put someone into a life of suffering? And, you know, so I guess that was kind of a long-winded question, but let's get back to what it actually was. Describe, if you could, or define from the perspective of the Bhagavad Gita, what karma is exactly. Okay. Karma is basically the action. Okay. Okay. Whatever That's how I understood it as yeah. well. And I and thought it if you understood it the action. simplicity, then, then it gets easier. But go ahead. Yeah, it is just action. It's just it's action. The cause okay. and effect. So if I am driving in my lane properly, I'm a careful driver. I stop on every stop sign. I am less prone to get into accidents where... I am crossing every stop sign, recklessly driving from one lane to another. I'm going 80 miles recklessly. The chances of getting into accident is a lot more. That is a karma. Right. How I act, how what I do, that's what the results I get. It's a cause and effect. If I study, I could get better grades. If I don't study and still hope that get a good grade, I'm reaching to the moon. So that is a simple concept of karma. Mm-hmm. Now, it, so as I said, it is cause and effect. Right. Okay. Now, you had another thing that why would God punish anybody? God, in Bhagavad Gita, God says, I do not take anybody's karma, I do not punish and I do not reward anybody. This is your own, I'm like a treasurer. It is your own account. Whatever you have put it in bank account, that's all you are going to draw. If you have $100, you cannot draw more than $100. <laughs> Although in America, we certainly think we should be able to. <laughs> and that, that's, what they, that's what we do. Why, what happens to the real estate market? We draw, we get higher mortgage than our money if we can make the payments. And right. The bank was so lenient, <laughs> and it caused us whole t- turmoil, not just in America, but the whole world. So now banks are more looking into cause and effect. Whatever you earn, based <clears> on that, you can get the payment. So the, whatever amount I have in my saving account or in my bank, that's all I can draw. So Lord says, in Bhagavad Gita, I am like a treasurer. Whatever you put in it, you can draw only so much. But I am more than a treasurer. I am the universal designer. 
I design and I put those karmas in such a way for you. I create a curriculum, a course, like in the a colleges and schools and universities. Whatever you need to learn, I will give you those things. I will bring those things in front of you. I will give you those quizzes so you learn from it. So the God is the best designer of the universe. Best of the best designer, I call it. He aligns and he puts everything from morning to evening or from birth to death. He has designed our life. Mm-hmm. And he has give, chosen those for us to learn or graduate and then move to the next level because he wants us to go higher and higher in our this lifetime or we believe in next lifetime. But he does not want us to stay in the same grade over and over and over every year. Right. So he gives us a curriculum. So basically, whatever we, our karmas we have done, based on those karmas, we are going to <clears throat> purify ourselves if we transform and use that opportunity for self-improvement, self-growth, and self-transformation. And it says beautifully in Bhagavad Gita that all these rishis and saints and seers they understand this particular concept. Therefore, they use all these opportunities in life to self-purify or self-improvement, you can call it. Or they set the men- their mentors. So even though they suffer, they are not suffering because they have done the karmas, but they come in this body, and in this body, they act like a regular human being so then people can relate to them, like Jesus, like Muhammad, they, I mean, they all come as a, like a, in a regular body, they, in, they incarnate in the regular body, and then they suffer to teach us a lesson that suffering is a part of life, because there is a cause and effect. So, mm-hmm. karmas are, some karmas we have done it in this life, some karmas we have done it in past life, and we have to reap it. As we sow, so we reap. Example, if I put a plant of tomatoes or strawberries, I can get the fruit in the same season in a couple of months. But if I plant a seed of mango tree, it will take many years to ripe. So certain karmas give the results right away, like I give you example of driving or example of studying you get the results in one quarter. But some of the things, some of the karmas, a lot longer to reap. For example, if I admit my, get admission in medical college, I cannot become a doctor in one quarter. It takes 10 years to become a good doctor. You have to go to first undergraduate to take those particular courses to get the admission in the medical college, then you go into medical college, then you go into residency, then you go into practices, until you become a good surgeon or good doctor. So these karmas, you have to, it's a bigger bucket of the karmas you have to fill before you become a good doctor, compared to a smaller bucket where you can get one, or in one quarter you can get A, B, C, whatever you get it. Mm-hmm. So, based on karmas, our life is designed and based because ultimate goal here is for us to go higher and higher and uplift ourselves and reach to ultimate purity of the supreme consciousness because that's the purpose of our life is to merge, feel, experience that oneness with the universal consciousness or universal mind. However, there are barriers between us and the universal mind. And what are those barriers? My ego, my disconnection, my selfishness. I am better than you. I have a better home than you. My way of doing things are better than you. So our ego, our greed, our attachment, all those things create a lot of barriers and they are the, they are the lead a big wall between me as a human being or this lower selfness to the supreme consciousness. Mm-hmm. It's like lead. 
you know, we go for accidents. And, you know, and I'm sure ever you have had the experience of getting x-rays. You know, whenever they put the x-ray machine on you, they always put a big lead around your stomach, that big sheet of the lead. Mm-hmm. And that lead is, that big sheet of lead is our ego, our selfishness, our attachment. And we do need this. I mean, if I do not have an attachment, how would I raise my kids if I'm not attached to them? I have to be attached to them. I mm-hmm. have to be attached to my body. Otherwise, how would I take care of my body? Mm-hmm. But be attached to kids, take care of them. But when we expect things in return, that now they're supposed to, when they're older, they're supposed to do this for me, and they're supposed to, especially in Indian culture, we have a lot of expectations from our kids that when we get older, our kids are supposed to take care of us. And since we... Mm. and took care of them by, and raised them, mm. now it's time for us to be dependent on them. Or they should take care of them. And that causes a problem. Mm-hmm. Because we should raise them, bless them, give them the good value system, and then let them decide on their circumstances. We should not just sit and cry and be attached to those kids and keep complaining that my kids don't do this, our kids don't do this because we did this for that. And that causes a problem. And that is the cause of unhappiness. Mm. So unhappiness is our lower self. And happiness, anandam, is our higher self. And that's the reason I name my organization Path to Anandam. Path to blissful state. And ananda is, has a more meaning also. It calls sat chit ananda. Means ultimate truth in my consciousness of eternal happiness and peace. Mm-hmm. Now, your website, Satya, is path to anandam.org. Now, is this where people can find your books? such as your latest yes, one, can, Path to Prosperity? Yes, they can find it there, and they can also find it on Amazon.com. All of my 11 books are listed on Amazon.com, oh. and six books are e-books, and five books are hard book, hardcover, and 108 Mantra is a soft book, e-book, and my book on Bhagavad Gita, which says, My Question and God's Answer. Because I have written the whole book in a question and answer format because I had a lot of questions. I was like an Arjuna and asking this question to my divine company all the time. Mm-hmm. And I would get the answers. So that's why I wrote or converted the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita into a practical spiritual guide or instruction manual to eternal happiness and peace. So all these books are available and on Amazon.com and many of these books like uh, 108 Mantras, last week it was number one bestseller on Amazon.com. A few weeks ago, my question and God's answers were became bestsellers and I wanted to tell you one more thing. Which is, I never expected, I think it was a grace and the blessing of the God, the ten books of mine became bestseller mm. in the last 30 days. And out of nine books, I was not even aware of it that they have become or they are becoming the bestsellers. I did not even have to raise my finger. And that is called the cause and effect or the grace of God with my maybe with my good karma, because I all the time I pray to God, I said, look, these books are, I have written for you, you asked me to write, and I write all of my books in meditation. Whenever I get the message to write the book, I go into deep meditation and just write those books. So I will be writing my books at night in dark, anywhere, everywhere, you can name it, but I will be sitting in meditation or living in totally in consciousness and connected with within myself and connected with the Supreme. And then I write these messages from God or Supreme 
which take the shape of a book. So I was just praying to God and asking, I said, look, these are your books. I want to bring more awareness. So tell me, what should I do? And I did, first book, I put a lot of effort to bring it in awareness and made, did a bestseller campaign, which was, the book was Yoga Beyond Asana, means yoga is much more than physical exercise. And after that, I, I just, I didn't have to raise a finger. Mm-hmm. And God just says, okay, now it's about that time. And I always, I was in a big believer of it that when the right come, time comes, God will take care of it. And he did. Always. And the other thing uh, in path to Anandam, basically we do two things. And one thing what we do is we help people, we guide people to be self-reliance, self-dependent, and self-healers, and learn how to be happy, how mm-hmm. to keep that eternal happiness and abundance and prosperity. It's not like a yo-yo game, and it's not also an instant coffee or instant that you get it. Self-disciplining, slow process, continuous practices, that's what we teach in workshops and one-to-one counseling and one-to-one guy, uh, and group teachings, etc. But the other thing we do is we support the philanthropic causes. Mm-hmm. So my other books, like Prosperity Forever, uh, it was it happened in uh, July, uh, on July 18th. We did it. Uh, we say, donated this book to the cause. The cause was flood, Ganga flood disaster. There was a big flood disaster in India on June 16th, which, care, which stayed there for more than a month, and more than 100,000 people have lost their lives. Homes, shelters, food. So we are supporting and our books and all the donations which comes to our organization is supporting this cause, and all the proceeds from this, these books are going 100% towards supporting and working for these people. And we have adopted one suburb or one village there. So we are reconstructing that village for the people. So building schools and building roads and whatever is needed to do, we are just working on that part. Very good. The website is pathtoanandam.org. Our guest today is Satya Kalra. Satya, thank you so much for joining us here on the program today. It's been a real pleasure to be enlightened. And thank you very much again for having me on your wonderful philanthropic spiritual radio station. Mm-hmm. And again, at the end, I would just say namaste to everybody and also to thank you to everybody for listening. Om Shanti 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 Hi. Om, peace, 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 peace for my body, peace for my mind, and peace for the whole universe. May God bless the whole universe and bring the peace in everybody's life and happiness in everybody's life and make this universe a better and better place to live for us for our children and for coming generation and for all the living beings and non-living beings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you again. We also want to thank you, the listeners, for joining us. Be sure to visit us at beyond50radio.com. That is the number 50. We do produce a wonderful weekly e-news update. We encourage you to subscribe to as well. I'm Daniel Davis. You've been listening to the Beyond 50 Radio program. Remember, live your day past halfway.